So, dark matter is a, uh, it's something we've, we've hypothesized actually scientists for uh, some decades now. It's observed in the rotation curves of galaxies that there's a lot more matter in the universe than we can actually measure. And there have been other alternate theories about dark stars or planets running around that we can't see, but those have essentially all been excluded as being a significant contributor to dark matter. So there really seems to be a lot of new particles out there with perhaps a hundred times the mass of the proton, which are able to, which are part of our galaxy, and we feel the tug of them in keeping our galaxy together and our galactic clusters together. And probably they're, they're sitting in the room today, they're, they're flowing through all of us t today, we just can't detect them. So there's two ways to look for dark matter. One way is to detect directly this dark matter and experiments at the uh, Sudbury uh, Neutrino uh, Underground uh, Neutrino Lab, uh, which is called Snow Lab and near Sudbury, are uh, designed to be produced in a low background environment and to actually observe these particles directly. But another way is to hypothesize the kinds of new physics that might be responsible for making dark matter and then to go off and try to produce this directly in a laboratory. That's something we'll try to do in the Large Hadron Collider at CERN and in, in the ATLAS experiments in, in particular. The, uh, one of the best theoretical models for, for explaining dark matter is something called supersymmetry. In supersymmetry, there's always, almost always, a, a very good candidate for a massive particle that is almost invisible, exactly what we want for, for dark matter. It's not the reason supersymmetry was, was uh, initially hypothesized. It was hypothesized for uh, really mathematical reasons, although beautiful mathematical reasons, to explain why certain properties of, of matter existed, how certain things like almost conservation of electric charge exists, or uh, some property like that. People hypothesized with, in the context of the spin, it's called, angular momentum of elementary particles, that there should be a symmetry that protects this because it seems to be a, a conserved quantity. This led to the supersymmetry theory, and along the way, people noticed a couple of things about it. One is that supersymmetry actually can fix a lot of mathematical problems we have in, in our current theory, which we call the, the standard model of particle physics. So long as it's at energies uh, that we can reach with the Large Hadron Collider, that's what we call low energy supersymmetry, which means the particles must be within oh, about a thousand times the mass of the proton or something like that. And a second thing that people noticed with supersymmetry is that it has exactly the particle we want to be uh, the dark matter candidate, as we call it. So at the LAC, if we produce supersymmetric particles, they, they will decay into some particles we can measure in our detectors. We call them standard model particles, like protons and electrons. And additionally, they should, these decay chains should include dark matter candidates which show up as missing energy and momentum in our detectors, then this would be a fantastically exciting uh, outcome if five years from now we have uh, observed supersymmetry at the LAC, that we know that there's uh, uh, good dark matter candidates, usually we call it the, the neutralino, but it's a supersymmetric partner of the, of the photon, for example, that this is a weakly interacting massive particle, so we don't detect it, but we infer it from its missing energy in our uh, uh, collider, in our, in our signature, missing energy signature in our uh, measurements. And at the same time, for example, snow lab experiments in Sudbury directly observe a consistent mass particle to this dark matter candidate directly on, in these low background underground experiments, which are the dark matter candidates in our solar system, then it ties the physics of the very small that we're observing with the Large Hadron Collider with physics of the very large that we observe in our, in our telescopes and our observations of galactic clusters.